Hey YouTube, this is Tom here for Casual TCG, and this is November 6th, the first day of BlizzCon 2015, after the Hearthstone announcement of the new adventure called The League of Explorers. Now, I have yet to see the Hearthstone panel for BlizzCon 2015, but I did notice that they posted a couple sample cards on their Facebook page, so I decided why not make a video where we go through them and give my first impressions. So, you know, obviously I'm not a Hearthstone pro. This is casual TCG, not, you know, one of those, you know, not Trump, you know. I'm not a pro Hearthstone player. So this will be coming from a, a casual perspective. This will be talking about how cool the cards are, you know, goofy little brews, goofy little synergies, um, not necessarily their competitive viability. So let's just jump straight into it. I have not seen any of these cards before. I want to look at them, see what they can do and uh, get excited for this new set. I'm, I'm always excited about new Hearthstone sets, uh, more so than other card games, because with the new Hearthstone set is not just new cards, it's a new gameplay experience, especially an adventure. It comes with, it's basically like playing a new game every time. Um, the, the set's not so much, the adventures definitely, but you know, even the sets like Goblins and Gnomes and the Grand Tournament changed the games up so much and uh, made all my deck building much more interesting so even when it's not a full-fledged adventure it can still be great but the uh, the League of Explorers is a new adventure so I'm really excited to see what they're gonna do with that so the first card we're looking at here is a mage card it is animated armor it's a four drop four four uh, meaning that it has four attack and four health and it has a the text that says your hero can only take one damage at a time I think this is a kind of an interesting card um, I mean, obviously it's an interesting card. It's it's got a cool, got a cool text uh, field, but I don't really see what you could do with this card in terms of deck synergies. I feel like this is what a Magic player would call it a sideboard card, um, kind of the kind of card that you put in your deck because a specific strategy is really popular. Um, I could see this working well against like Handlock, where you're going to be taking. A ton of damage all at once from giant creatures you know if they toss down a bunch of a bunch of molten giants and stuff and then try to kill you for lethal um, but in that case they're probably gonna be able to blow up this guy pretty easily um, same thing goes for uh, freeze mage freeze mage wants to just get you done with one in one combo and get the whole fight with out in one turn if possible and although this guy would be able to stop that, they'll be able to deal with this guy before that becomes a problem. Yeah, they might might mean they're like, you know, one fireball away from lethal, but they're still going to kill you regardless. So I don't actually see this guy being that useful in terms of deck building. He just doesn't seem... He seems cool, and I really want to see what he can do. And you know what? He, he's probably one of those cards that will become very useful and very important later on. But when this set releases, I don't see it being all that important just because I can't, I don't see any super interesting synergies with this guy right now. If the mage had more ways to give this guy stealth, that may be true. You know, I could see this guy being interesting. He, he survives a lot of the uh, board wipes um, from Paladin and Warlock, but he does not, he's not going to be surviving a flame strike. He's not going to be surviving. Um, you know, a lot of those things that just deal a fuck ton of damage. He's going to survive little board wipes, and if you can give him stealth, he may be interesting in terms of, you know, blocking um, turn one kill decks, but let's move on. So the next one is, oh, I'm going to butcher this one, Anub, Anub, Anubisath? Anubisath Sentinel. There you go. I'm, I'm probably not pronouncing that. I never actually played AQ uh, in World of Warcraft, so... I, uh, I, I didn't even play in vanilla, I played in TBC, so I have no idea how to say this guy's name. So this guy's a 5-drop 4-4. Four four. Um, very familiar, actually. I don't know why we have so many 4-4s. Four but he's a neutral card, and he's a death rattle that says, Give a random friendly minion plus 3 plus 3. So in terms of value, this guy is a lot like... Um, oh, I'm, I'm blanking on his name. He's the 3-4 priest card that with the same effect. Well, a similar effect. Uh, I, I like that they're giving this to a neutral card. The only problem is because it's neutral, it has to be worse. And it just doesn't seem that good. Like, it's a 5-drop 7-7 seven, seven in terms of value. But A, it can be silenced. B, it could die and nothing else be on the board. There are a lot of ways to neutralize this card. And on turn 5, 
you know, on turn 5, if I'm playing a 4-4, four four, I probably want to make sure it has a super cool effect, like, um, you know, Eelbot is really important, even though it's a 5-drop 3-3. Three three. But this guy does not have a battle cry, this guy does not really have anything when it's played on the field, and unless you play him and he survives, and you wait until the next turn, your opponent has complete control over how the, the death rattle happens. So, it's not one of those death rattles that it's just guaranteed value. This is very situational value, and I'd be hesitant to just throw him into decks, but you might be able to find a cool deck with him. I mean, I'm sure he'd, he'd be really funny in all those um, death rattle decks that, you know, if this if this had the guy that doubles death rattles, that'd be amazing. It's, a, it's you know, plus six, plus six. That'd be super cool. But um, I don't see this guy doing all that much. So the next one is Ancient Shade. Um, right off the bat, this guy's a 4-drop 7-4, and his battle cry is you shuffle an Ancient Curse in your deck that deals 7 damage to you when you draw it. So my first thought is the Pirate that has a very similar power and toughness. But then my second thought is, you know, Yes, it has a downside. Yes, it's a cheap creature that's a 7-4. Uh, yes, you're tempted to want to play this in aggro decks. You know, maybe aggro warlock or something where the damage just doesn't matter. But you, it's, it's less about getting a creature out on turn 4 that has 7 power and more about what can this guy trade with. Yes, he can trade with a, a Dr. Boom. He can trade with a, um, a Ogre. He also dies to a Shredder. He also dies to a um, a Warrior Weapon. He dies to a lot of stuff. And that's just not great for 4 mana and 7 life. It may still be used, because, you know, a big part of aggro decks is they just don't give a shit about downsides and just want to put pressure on the opponent. Um, but I, the 4 life, just it, 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 it's questionable. It's questionable for something with a downside. So I, I'm curious to see what happens with this card. And, you know, maybe you'd be able to build a cool aggro deck around him. Put him in something like, you know, Zoo Warlock. But I don't see this guy happening. Now this card, this card I did actually see before I started this video. Um, I actually think this card's kind of funny. This is the kind of card I like to see on this channel. This is the kind of card that is never going to make, get competitive play, but I'm totally going to play it. <laughs> I love stupid Warlock decks, or not Warlock decks, Murloc decks, and my biggest problem is that I don't have, um, I don't have the legendary creature that summons Murlocs or or puts Murlocs in your hand. So I needed a, I need like a end game card that will finish the game if I haven't already won. Um, the problem with this card, though, is it does sort of go against Murloc philosophy. If you haven't won by turn 5 or 6, you're probably not going to win. But it's still fun. I like s spells that are cool like this. I like spells that are big and cost a lot. I, you know, in Magic, they're hardly ever useful. And in Hearthstone, the really only useful one I can think of is Mind Control. Um, Pyroclasm is good in Arena, but whatever. I like this card because it has a lot of flavor and has a lot of fun value. And as a casual player, I can see myself playing with it, but I, you know, I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it doing anything in terms of almost anything outside of that. So the next card actually uh, not only is a legendary, but it also shows off a new mechanic in the League of Explorers, which is Discover. Uh, what happens with Discover is, you know, if you know the card Track, which is a one-drop spell that you look at the top three cards of your deck and you can choose one. Discover is very similar to that. When you discover, it puts three cards on the top of your screen that aren't in your deck, and you get to select one of them and you draw it. So, with this guy, he's a 9-drop 7-8. Once again, uh, it, it, the, the, the power and toughness do not seem that great for a 9-drop. 9-drops in general just aren't that great, um, because Ysera and Nefarian... Um, they're just all the, they're just really powerful 9-drops that already exist, but the kind of vagueness of this battle cry makes me wonder, because it says, discover a powerful artifact. Now, what we've already seen so far in terms of discover is that 
they specify something about the card that you're discovering. For example, you can discover one drop cards, you can discover three drop cards, but I haven't seen a card to say something like discover powerful artifact yet. So I have no idea what that means. I'm guessing it's going to be like one of those cards that you gain access to cards that you could normally not have access to, like Ysera and like uh, ETC. So I'm, I'm guessing powerful artifact means, you know, three random cards or, or three cards randomly selected from a pool of cards you're, you don't normally have access to. If that's true, I could see this guy be very, being very interesting, depending on the artifacts. But since we don't know what those powerful artifacts are, it's really hard to judge this guy. I guess from a casual perspective, I'd say I'm interested to see what happens. I'm not so hot on a 9-drop 7-8, but obviously the artifacts are what matter. So once we figure out what those are, I will be able to say whether I really like this guy. But uh, he's an Arch Thief, so I'm kind of curious. You know, it has nothing to do with stealing from your opponent. Discover just draws the cards uh, out of nowhere. It doesn't draw them from your deck or from your opponent's deck or anything, so I'm missing the flavor there. But Let's go on to the next one. Now the next one, <sighs> this guy, this guy, <laughs> Bran Bronzebeard, he's a 3-drop 2-4. First of all, thank you for making a guy with a static effect that has a toughness value that I actually like, <laughs> you know, um, can we make Cultus not a 4-2 anymore, please? I'm so tired of that being the case. But what Bran Bronzebeard does is he makes your battle cries trigger twice. So he's like the Baron guy that makes your death rattles trigger twice, except for battle cries. And the first thing that comes to mind is the cold light. I am imagining Mil, Mil Rogue being very, very good <laughs> with this card. Um, milling six cards with every cold light is going to be incredible. That's going to be super fun. And as a casual player, I love Mil Rogue. Mil Rogue is hilarious. It's not good. But I don't care. It's hilarious. It's it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's super dirtly. It's super stupid. But I really enjoy it. So this card, I'm going to enjoy a lot. I can also see him actually in aggro. Um, he's a little high on the curve for aggro, but I can see him working really well with sergeants. You know, a one drop plus four attack on any creature you like. It's pretty hot. Um, obviously, this card just goes in so many decks so many decks that you want to have crazy battle cries in it's just gonna be great it's there's nothing you can say about this card beyond it's 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 fucking amazing for casual cards it's just going to be really really cool so let's go on to the next one ah so this curse of Rafan. Rafam, excuse me uh, it's a two drop spell for warlock that says give your opponent a cursed card while they hold it they take two damage on their turn now, like the Arch Thief, the entirety of this card relies on another card that we don't have access to. Um, I can speculate a on a couple things, though. It says, give your opponent a cursed card. So, my first thought was that it curses one of their cards, meaning that if they, you know, they have to play it or else they take two damage. But it says give, rather than curse one of their cards. So, based on what's happened already in Hearthstone, give means giving them a card, giving them a whole new card. And I'm assuming it's a card that says Cursed. But if it's a zero drop, or if it's uh, anything, you know, it's not going to matter. If it does something cool, then it will matter. But if it's just a blank card with a mana cost, yeah, depending on the mana cost, it could still be good, but I'm not that interested in it. Um, I could see this being really fun depending on the card, though. If it's just a, you know, a blank spell... That's that's cost five mana that could be pretty cool Because you get it out early you get enough out early and they just fill their hand and have to sit there taking damage And that's kind of cool, but if it's something if it's something like you know discard a card or or Something that uh, decks can just ignore besides mana cost. I don't see this card being all that good or fun Even it's gonna just be shit like in the casual card game scene you can have cards that are shitty that are still really fun to play. You know, you can still... Uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. In, okay, um, Varian Rin. Varian Rin in Hearthstone is probably not that great. He's a 10-drop... What is he, a 7-7? Seven, seven? He's just not that great. He's coming into play way too late, and he doesn't really have that much impact on the board. 
Um, initially. Yeah, okay, so it's random. He could randomly get you your top three best cards. But most of the time, you're going to get one to two creatures. And some of the time, they're going to suck. Not the best card in the world. But in terms of casual playability, hell yeah. He's so fucking cool. Varian Ren is probably my favorite card in Hearthstone right now. Um, and similarly, Curse of Rafam could be one of those cards. It's just not that good, but it's super fun to play with. But based on the cursed card, it could also just be not fun to play with. So that's sort of the danger there. Talking about cards that are going to be a whole lot of fun uh, on release and not so fun once everyone finds out that they're awful to play with is Cursed Blade. It's a one drop, two, th two uh, attack, three durability weapon. Uh, I believe that's Rogue. Is that Rogue? Yeah, that should be Rogue. And it says, double all damage dealt to your hero. <sighs> so, the first thing that comes to mind is, that card's really bad for Rogue. Um, there are way better two-power weapons if you're going to use a two-power weapon. I think it's a Perdition's Blade. It's just a better card in general. But, once dealing damage to your hero becomes a strategy, I could see this being very interesting. Um, you can get Molten Giants out much quicker with this card. Um, but that's not really a strategy for Rogue right now. I'm very, very interested to see what happens with this card. But initially, it's not looking so good. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this, this card and cards in general for just a second. So there are a couple types of cards when it comes to early releases of card games. Uh, there are traps, which are cards that look really sweet. Cards that are just amazing. These cards, just, wow, look at this card, it's so cool. I want to play with it. But it ends up just being horrible. And not like the bad bad that's just not good and ranked, but the bad bad that like you just are actively hurting yourself by playing it. Um, that's a trap. There's another type, which is the opposite. I don't, I don't think it has a name. Um, maybe it's like, uh, you know... The, the Ugly Duckling. Let's call it that. That's not going to catch on, but that's okay. Um, which is the card that looks really, really bad, but ends up fitting perfectly into a strategy and ends up kind of acting like the keystone for that strategy and makes the deck really great. Like, bad cards that work well in really good decks would fit into this category. And I'm curious to see where this card ends up fitting on that spectrum because it's definitely not a trap. It definitely doesn't look good, but it might end up being pretty good down the line. We're going to have to see. So the next card is something I actually sort of uh, foreshadowed earlier on, which is uh, Dark Peddler, a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two for Warlock, with a battle cry of Discover a 1-cost card. So this, in an aggro deck, an aggro zoo Warlock, is just value. Just value all the value you know you could play you know you're gonna play your three two imps that deal three damage to you um but for the two two mana slot you can get this guy which is a two two body he's a bear he's not bad he's you know he's not really a bear if you look at him <laughs> uh he's kind of scrawny but whatever that's not what i'm talking about um you also get a one mana card that's pretty great i don't know exactly what those cards are going to be you know, it could be a Mortal Coil. It could be a Flame Imp. If it's a Flame Imp, bam! Your, your, you know, your turn three could be Flame Imp in, into another Dark Peddler. And that's actually pretty sweet. I kind of like that idea. Um, but just like any card that deals with randomness in a Hearthstone, it's going to be very hit or miss. <laughs> you know, uh, Shredder is probably a good example of kind of uh, randomness that is basically always going to be good. There's very rarely a bad card to get with Shredder. Except for Darnassus Aspirant, which will just lose you uh, a shard. Uh, put you back a turn. But beyond that, you're basically always going to get a good card. This guy's fairly similar in that regard. You're basically always going to get a card. You know, whether it's going to be perfect for you, maybe not. But you're ba you're always going to get value. You're always getting a card. Um, and since you get that card selection, it's not just draw a card. It's card selection. It's card quality. And uh, that's very important in card games. Card draw is great. Card draw is the engine that keeps these games going, but card quality wins games. So keep that in mind. The next card we're looking at is Dart Trap, which uh, 
sort of looks like a trap. <laughs> Whenever an opposing hero power is used, deal 5 damage to a random enemy. If it was just field deal 5 damage to the enemy hero, it might be broken. <laughs> In fact, I'd probably venture to say that it would be broken. Um, but this is not going in a control hunter deck. I don't know if there is a control hunter deck. So I'm not so worried about it hitting a random enemy. I'm, you know, you're probably going to get close to lethal turn five or six or even earlier. And they're probably not going to have much on the field. And if they do, yeah, this is a chance of dealing five damage to them. But it's going to be closer to 50-50 than, you know, 5%. So we'll see what happens with this card. But I don't see it being all that great. Um, in fact, it might even... It might, <laughs> It might even just be, well, maybe not a nerf to Hunters in Arena, but definitely not the, the secret you want to be getting. You definitely want to be getting Explosive Trap or Freeze Trap. Um, those are just way, way better. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I just don't like this card. I think the issue with this card is that it's too situational, and the effect that it has just isn't that great. Flavor-wise, it's a win. Like, you know, we're talking Indiana Jones, we're talking Adventurers, and this is weird monkey statue shooting darts. That's pretty cool. And your hero power sort of represents you. So you doing something causes it to go off instead of your minions doing something, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, so flavor-wise, it's a win. But in terms of playability or even, you know, want to playability, I, I just don't care about this card. It just doesn't seem that interesting. The next one, I think, is a trap. It's a trap in the... Um, I think this is a trap. So it is a six drop spell for a priest called Entomb. And it says, choose an enemy minion, shuffle it into your deck. Want me to read that again? It says, choose an enemy minion and shuffle it into your deck. Two things. One, costs the exact same as, what is it, recycle? <laughs> Whatever it is. Uh, the druid spell that does the same thing except it shuffles it into their deck. So it's just better. It's just better than a recycle. Let's be honest. It's better in every way. You get rid of their minion, and you get their minion. The issue with that is it's a whole lot better to recycle a shitty minion that they have than to entomb it, because then you have the chance to draw their shitty minion. Now, if you're entombing things that would actually be sort of, you know, either on mana parity or uh, uh, better, you know, if you were entombing something that costs more than six, this could probably be pretty good. You might draw a, you know, Ysera. You might draw a Sylvanas. You might draw uh, a, a Dr. Boom of all things. That would be great. But you have to think, I'm drawing something that they chose to put in their deck not something that I chose to put in my deck. Not drawing a card that you want to draw from your deck can be a bad thing. So, think about that. You are messing up your, like, the statistics of your deck. You're not going to draw Dr. Boom as often if you play in Tomb and use it frequently. You're just not. Statistically not going to happen. But, at the same time, if something's really, really good, especially in a non-priest deck, bam, this is an answer. So I have a feeling this is a trap. I have a feeling this is one of those cards that's way not as good as I think it is. <laughs> it looks really good. Any card that just outwardly says, you know, this is way better than another card, any strict upgrade, is in danger of being a trap, especially in Hearthstone, because there's the class system. So one card can be strictly better. Well, for instance, Hunters have, uh, is it Quick Shot? Which is strictly better than Dark Bomb. But you can't use Quick Shot as a Warlock. So Dark Bomb is pretty damn good. The same way, you know, Recycle, not the best card right now in, in Druid. You know, it might change, but it's not the best card right now. Doesn't seem as good as in Tomb. But, guess what the better class is in general, you know? 
And two may be worse because it's in Priest. So that's something to keep in mind. I probably wouldn't play Priest to play this card. But if I'm already playing Priest, and there's another card from another class that's dominating, I wouldn't mind entombing it. That's a little too much for a card that's probably not worth my time, but still. Let's go on. At least Star Seeker. Now this is one of the main characters of the set. She's a legendary creature. Uh, four drop, three five. With the battle cry, shuffle the map of the golden monkey into your deck. What is the map of the golden monkey? Well, the map of the golden monkey is a spell that shuffles the golden monkey into your deck. See where we're going here? And the golden monkey is a six drop at I believe four four with taunt, maybe. But it also has a battle cry. And that battle cry is that all your cards in your hand and library become legendary cards. Yeah. <laughs> So if you want to pay four, and then randomly draw a card that you have to pay more mana, and then randomly draw another card that you have to pay more mana to make your deck bad, <laughs> this card is my dream. This card is the casual TCG card of the day. That's not even a thing, but I'm just, this is it. Because that is as funny, and flavorful, and completely useless as I could ever dream of. It is, it is just perfect in terms of appealing to the casual market. And I don't mean casual market as in like scrubs, I mean people that just don't play the game competitively. You know, this is a fun card. It's not a good card, it's just a fun card. So we'll see what happens, but. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> this card is weird. So the next card is uh, Dijin or Jin. I think it's Jin. I used to call it Dijin as a kid because I'm an idiot, but I think it's Jin. Jin of Zephyrs. Uh, you know, like that Red Hot Chili Peppers song that I I hate that song so much. If Mike was here, he'd probably yell at me for hating that song, but that's okay. Jin of Zephyrs is a 5-drop 4-6. And I think he's rare. That's right. No, purple's epic. He's, he's epic, sorry. And his text says, Whenever you cast a spell on a friendly minion, another friendly minion, excuse me, cast a copy of it on this one. Oh. What? <laughs> Whenever you cast a spell on another friendly minion, cast a copy of it on this one. Okay. Okay, I get it. So you play this guy, and then you play Divine Shield on your Sylvanas, even though you wouldn't want to do that. I don't know why I said that. Let's say Dr. Boom. You would automatically play Divine Shield on this guy as well. That's pretty cool. I can see this guy being pretty good in Paladin, pretty good in Priest, not good anywhere else, <laughs> I don't know. Um, this is the kind of card I like, this is the kind of really cool, not exactly build around me, but like, build around me, you know, minus. It's not a card you build a deck around, it's a card that you put in a deck that's already being built around a specific card. So not a combo piece, but sort of like you know, a little extra synergy to make the world go around. So let's go on to the next one. Oh, God. <sighs> the next one is a 3-drop, 2-4, Desert Camel. Who looks ugly. We... Oh, and he's a beast. Sorry, he's a beast. And a Hunter card. With the battle cry, put a 1-cost minion from each deck into the battlefield. Okay. So remember when we talked about traps? This guy's probably a trap. <laughs> it's a trap in the... I'm not going to do that anymore. I, I will never do that voice again. I'm sorry. The reason I say that is because if you look at his effect, it looks pretty good, right? It looks pretty good. You put a one-cost minion from each deck onto the battlefield. What's the chance that they have a one-cost minion? What, what's the chance? Not many decks run one-cost minions. Oh, okay, so maybe 50%. Not a whole lot. Not a ton. That's not the first card you look to unless you're playing an aggro deck. And obviously, if you're running this guy, you're playing an aggro deck. So it, it, it sort of has that, like, that guise of, uh, of, you know, equality. It sort of pretends that you're both getting value out of this card. 
But most of the time, you're not going to. Most of the time, you're going to get your guy, and they're not going to get anything. But look at its stats. It's a three drop. What is at the top of the aggro curve? About three drop. Two drop more likely. You know, that's the that's the peak of the curve. One drops and two drops, and then it sort of slants down to three, and then a tiny bit of four. That's about all you run in most aggro decks. So this guy's a little bit above curve, just a little, and he's a two four. So he's a little bit more of a defensive creature. He's for wiping the board. He's for getting things out of your way. That'd be great if there were a lot of two toughness taunt creatures. But there aren't. There aren't that many. So this guy's about board control and aggro. Which don't really match up. You kind of want to just be pounding their face in. So he doesn't really jive with that. But he does give you a dude. So that's cool. Gives you some more dudes. Everybody likes dudes. He's a beast. Prox kill command. That's great. I just don't see this guy going very far. He's probably going to get a little bit of play upon release, and then not much else, because he just doesn't... You know, if he was a 4-2, <laughs> well, he'd be crazy, but he'd be... You know, I would play him, because that would be on top of curve, lots of lots of power, put a lot of pressure on my opponent, deal some damage, go face. But uh, if you're not going face, then what's the point? Why are you playing Hearthstone? What are you doing? <laughs> so the next card is a 4-drop 7-7, seven, seven, Eerie Statue. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> and uh, his effect is he can't attack unless it's the only minion in the battlefield. That is really cool. That is really cool. So Handlock just got a new card. Maybe not, because turn four you want to be playing um, Hill Giants. But that's still pretty cool. I could see Mage playing it? Because, you know, board wipe, flame strike, and then just swack for seven. That's pretty tight. I like that. Other than that, though, you know, it's a target for um, the warlock board wipe. <sighs> Beyond that, though, I don't... I don't know. It's one of those cards that looks really cool. Looks really cool, but I just don't... I don't know where this is going to go. I have no idea. I cannot predict one bit. But I'm looking forward to seeing it because that card looks pretty cool. Let's go on to the next one. Excavated Evil. Well, that is a strange card name. You know, Magic, for example, uh, they went through like the most basic names they could go through early on, and now they're stuck choosing weird names or like lower specific names. But this one... Hearthstone's just right out of the gate, choosing weird-ass names <laughs> that they do not have to worry about uh, running into later on. Excavated Evil is a 5-drop spell for Priest that deals 3 damage to all minions. Shuffle this card into your opponent's deck. No. No. Nobody's going to play this card. <laughs> You printed Light Bomb. Yes, Light Bomb is not necessarily better in all cases. But it's better than this card, let's be real. Even better, Holy Nova is better than this card. Two damage to all things, heal all your guys for two. That's way better than this card. You get one less damage, but you get to heal everybody. Yeah, and then you have to worry about them wiping your board too. No, I don't see this card doing very well. I... I sort of like the flavor, because the flavor is sort of like, oh, you uncovered this ancient evil, um, and you're both adventurers in this in this tomb or whatever. So I can, you know, having that proc off each other and, and sort of like, you know, one of them discovering an ancient evil over the, and then the other one doing the kind of spreading chaos. I like that. Definitely chaotic. Not that great though. So I don't, I, I just don't see myself playing this card at all. I really just don't. Now, this card. Wow. Okay, so this is not Rancor. Okay, this isn't Rancor. We get it. It's a Hunter card. It's a two-drop spell that says, Give a minion, plus one, plus one, and death rattle. 
add an explorer's hat to your hand. Now, if you're listening to this, the audio, not the video, the card is also called Explorer's Hat. So, basically, for two mana, you give a guy plus one, plus one, and when that creature dies, you get the, ha the buff, the spell again. Not horrible. It's not great. I don't know if it'll see any play. Might be an interesting arena card, just because you keep getting it back. Uh, I don't see it going into any death rattle sort of builds for Hunter. Um... Yeah, I, it's such a weird card. I don't know. I'm I'm curious to see what happens. But beyond that, yeah, I, I'm going to keep my eye on this guy. I don't think he's a trap. I, I, he's definitely not cool enough to be a trap. It's definitely not like, oh man, this is going to break the game. It's just interesting. I don't know what to think. Wish we had Mike here. Next time we'll get Mike on. When we do the full set review, we'll definitely get Mike on. But he was busy tonight, so let's go on to the next one. Ooh, a 3-4. Oh, excuse me. A 3-4 three, for 3 called Fierce Monkey. It's a beast for the warrior with taunt. I I mean, he's one toughness and one mana cost less than Tazdingo. And he's in warrior. Are they trying to promote taunt warrior? Is that a thing? Is that, is that a thing we do? This guy might do it. He doesn't seem like bad stats. Seems like a just a strictly better spider. But, hey, you know what? I am an awful gauge for what's competitively viable, which is why I, I run this channel and not a competitively viable <laughs> discussion channel. We're not, you know, we're not Trump. We're not Kripparian. We're talking about cards that are cool and are interesting to play. And I am very interested in Taunt Warrior um, because there are so many cards that are trying to promote it, and it's still not seeing any play. So I'd like, I, I want to be the guy who makes the deck right when it's at that transition, right when it's going from like not good to pretty damn good. I want to be that guy. I'm not going to be, but I want to be. So we'll see what happens. Also love the flavor. Monkeys are great. Let's see more monkeys, please. Ethereal Conjurer. It's a five, oh, oh my god, I just read this guy, I'm sorry, I just, <laughs> oh, I just read this guy's text. So he's a five drop, six three. Oh, why, why, why do you print? Okay, he's a five drop, six three, for mage. With, with the text that says, battle cry, discover a spell. Remember when I said that the discover mechanic sort of gives you an identifying descriptor? Or what the spell you discover is. This is any spell. Do you like spells? Do you like spells? Are you a mage? Do you cast spells? Are you a sorcerer? You are? Great. This guy's cool. He's not great. You don't draw one of your spells. You get to pick and choose out of three randomly selected spells in the whole game. Yeah, this guy's gonna be cool. This guy's not gonna be good. He's a 6-3. Probably not great, but you get any spell. You could get a Brawl, you could get a Twisting Nether, probably not a great card to draw, but whatever. You could get an Innervate, and you get to choose? That's pretty great. I like this card. This card seems cool. Probably not that great, though. Let's be real. Three Toughness is awful. Uh, basically, anything under, anything under five Toughness is pretty bad if you're paying more than five for it. Like, <laughs> unless it has a crazy effect, this is not that good, you know? You just don't, you don't want, it's gonna feel really bad when this guy dies to a two drop. It's gonna feel really bad. But you got a spell, that's pretty cool. So, I'm interested to see what this guy does, but yeah, I don't know. Uh-oh, every fin is awesome. Jesus. So they're really pushing Murloc aggro. This is a seven drop spell <laughs> for the shaman that says give your minions plus two plus two. This costs one less for each Murloc you control. So do you guys remember when I said I liked Mur Murloc aggro and I want to play Murloc aggro? Yeah. This card's for me. <laughs> it could technically be a zero cost spell that gives all your 
minions plus two plus two. It could be a just zero drop win condition. A zero drop savage roar. Well, not exactly savage roar, but basically savage roar. If you have seven Murlocs on the field. That's not actually that hard. Let's be real. This card could be pretty great. I'm excited. I want to play this card. Probably not going to be that competitively viable, and I've been saying that all, all the video, but I want to play this guy. In ranked. <laughs> with a Shaman Murloc deck. That'd be, that's going to be so fun. I also like the art. Look at that guy. He's pissed. He's also, like, casting a spell or something. I don't know. He does look pissed, though. Okay. What is this? Oh, a new mech? Oh. Okay. So, this is a 4-drop, 3-4. So, strictly worse than the spider. Who's a mech? He's a gorilla bot, A3. Actually, looks pretty cool. I like the artwork. And his battle cry is, if you control another mech, discover a mech. I heard you like mechs, so I put a mech in your mech, just in case you have a mech. Yeah, there you go. Old memes, what's up? Exhibit, don't sue me. Oh, hello. Wow, that is interesting. Fossilized Devilsaur. It's an 8-drop, eight 8-8. Eight, eight. With battle cry. If you control a beast, gain taunt. So this is basically the druid big guy, druid tree folk dude, except it looks for beasts and gives them taunt if it has a beast. That's pretty cool. I don't think this card's bad. I think this card's pretty good. Um, arena? I can see this guy being pretty good in arena. I don't know where you'd put him anywhere else, you know? Um, I really don't know where you'd put him anywhere else, but I don't see. I don't think he's bad. You know, he basically gives everybody that druid card if you have a beast which you know if you're building a deck with this guy you probably are going to have him you're not just going to play an eight drop for eight uh or oh, excuse me an eight eight for eight i don't know he's cool i like that they're they they create neutral cards based off of class cards or vice versa but balance it out by making the class cards better i think that's cool i like that you know uh tempo mage got the flame elemental with uh, with the Black Rock Corruptor. I like that. He's not better. He's worse, but he's still cool, and he's still used. So I can see this guy being pretty similar in that regard. Um, if Beast was more of like an all-class tribe rather than a only hunter tribe. We'll see what happens. So the next card is Forgotten Torch, which is a three-drop spell for Mage. Which is, uh, let's see, it says deal three damage, then shuffle a Roaring Torch into your deck. That deals six damage. I'm guessing. Does it deal it to you? Does it? Is it just a? Is it just a uh, fireball? What are we working with here? What does that mean? If it deals the damage to you and you draw it, that sucks. If it is a spell that says deal six damage, that's not horrible. Just like an another fireball, which isn't bad. I don't. I, I just don't know what to think about this card. It seems kind of weird. Ah, jeweled scarab. I heard you like curves, so I gave you a card that gets you on curve. <laughs> jeweled scarab is a two-drop one-one. Pretty awful, right? That's horrible. Eh, not really. Not that bad. Not as bad as you may think. Not as bad as a one-drop two-one. <laughs> um, it's a beast, which is weird. It looks more like a robot, but that's okay. And it has Battle Cry, discover a 3-drop card. So, you have the 2-drop 1-1 one, one that draws you a card already. What if you could guarantee that that card was on curve? I think this guy's going to see a lot of play. He may not be the best card in general, but in Hunter, where you need a beast on turn 2, you know, or maybe not need, but you want a beast on turn 2, and you want to be on curve with your aggro decks, I can see this guy being pretty good. In Arena, he's really good. Um, you know, I can see this guy being a lot of fun. I like guaranteed curves. I like knowing that you're going to have the card that, you, card that you need to play the next turn. That's why I loved that Tavern Brawl. That was my one of my favorite Tavern Brawls. When you could, you know, know that you were going to draw a card that was on curve. It's amazing. Um, I'd like to see this guy get to see play. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to put him on my decks. Let's see what happens. The next card is a 2-drop 3-2. Two two. 
And he's a huge toad with a cigar and a knife and a son and a bunch of bones. So he's a he's a badass. He's a mafia boss dad. Also a frog. And his death rattle is deal one damage to a random enemy. That's pretty weird. That, this guy's weird. I don't know if I like him. You know, there's uh, the flame juggler guy from uh, the Grand Tournament who does not see any play outside of Arena. And this guy just seems like a worse version. I don't know how I feel. Seems interesting though, I guess. You know, he's a guy. He does things. He's not going to be bad in Arena. I just don't see him getting played much. And he's not one of those cards that's interesting enough in casual play to warrant conversation. So, if you can't afford a better card, this guy may be in your decks as a casual player. But beyond that, it doesn't seem that cool. Uh-oh. Keeper of Uldaman. Is it, wasn't it Ulduar? Maybe I'm just confused. I didn't play World of Warcraft for that long. Uh, Keeper of Uldaman is a 4-drop 3-4. And it's a Paladin card with a battle cry that says, Set a minion's attack and health to 3. That's kind of cool. The flavor on this card is is really good. It's prob probably not a good card. You know, it's a... It's kind of like a... Boar polymorph on a creature that doesn't give it charge. You know. I could see this guy seeing play. Yeah. First of all, it can turn your dudes, your 1-1s, one -ones, into 3-3s. Three -three That's pretty great. Or... It can turn their big dudes into 3 threes, and then you can kill them with this. I like this card. I think this card is fantastic. This is the kind of card I want to see more of. Really cool. I like this guy a lot. Aww, Murloc Tiny Finn. <gasps> oh. It's a 1-1 one -one Murloc for zero. So, if Wisp was a Murloc, would it be better? Yes. <laughs> yes, it would. Would it be playable? Probably not. Would I put it in my Murloc decks just to check? Hell yeah. Would this be the worst card to top deck ever? Absolutely. Let's go on to the next one. Oh, hello there. Mounted Raptor is a 3-drop three 3-2. Three uh, that's awkward. And his death rattle is summon a random 1-cost minion. Oh, snap. So we just got Mini Shredder. Mini Shredder. What's up? But he's for Druid. And he's a beast. That's weird. Are there any bad one-cost minions? I, I don't mean bad as in, like, not worth playing. I mean bad as in you don't want to draw them. Uh, because Shredder can get Doomsayer, which is, you know, a double-edged sword. So I'm curious how many one-drops just aren't that good in terms of things that you, you know, you don't want to necessarily get. I don't know. This, just like Shredder, is probably going to be based almost entirely around the cards that it can get and the things it can trade up, up to. This guy, unlike Shredder though, can't trade up to all that much. There aren't that many creatures that are good that you need to get rid of that have three toughness. There are a lot of creatures with four toughness that you need to get rid of. Not so many with three. So this guy, not gonna be as good as Shredder in my opinion. But I'm still curious to see what happens. Because Shredder's great. Shredder's probably one of the best cards in the game, in my opinion. So I'm curious to see where this guy goes. Next one is a Jungle Moonkin, which is a 4-drop four 4-4. Four four. And its effect is both players have spell damage plus 2. Not only, no, eh, not only is he a beast, but he's also a druid card. I can see this actually pre being pretty good. This is like Omega Swipe. This is the best swipe I've ever seen. And, in some matchups, your opponent's not going to be able to actually do anything. You know, if your opponent's playing, you know, uh, uh, what's the thing that doesn't use spell power? <laughs> a zoo deck, they may not have that many cards that benefit from spell power. And you can wipe them out with a really sweet swipe with this card. Um, I don't know if it's sort of a win more and uh, too dangerous to play. But I think it's cool. It's definitely a spell I'm interested in seeing more of than playing around with... You know, giving your opponent things and the kind of uh, uh, synchronous abilities. I don't even know if that's a phrase that people use, but let's go with it. 
I'm interested to see what happens with this guy, but otherwise, I'm probably not going to be the one to test the waters with him. The next card is a 2-drop 2-1 two two Museum Curator, which is a priest minion. And his battle cry says, discover a death rival card. That's pretty cool. So you could discover a shredder with this guy. Or the raptor we just looked at and be straight on curve. Or a sludge belcher. I think this guy's just straight value. Yeah, his power and toughness sucks. But you draw a card. Like you just get for two mana, you get to draw a card that's probably pretty good. And also get a one two. Which, you know, not great, but st I'd rather let I'd rather have a one two than a two drop tracking that only look for death rattle cards. You know what I'm saying? But only looking for death rattle cards is actually a good thing in my eyes. Because if it were if it was any card, if it was, you know, just look at three random cards, you have way more chances to get a card you're not gonna use. And Death Rattle has this thing where uh, most of them are just value. Just pure value town USA. Some of them are, you know, not so value town, but uh I'd still I wouldn't mind a zombie chow from this guy. Not horrible. Yeah, you're not playing it on turn one, but whatever. It's still still not bad. Power and toughness. I dig this guy. If he was a 2-drop, I'd be much, much, much happier with him, but I can see why they wouldn't do that. Um, and, you know, a 1-2 is not horrible either, especially for clearing up the board early on. So let's go on to the next card. The next card is a 1-drop Druid spell, I believe, which is Raven Idol. And is choose one, discover a minion, or discover a spell. Oh, God. Okay. So this guy seems really good. Druid has this this thing where they have spells that are just better than other spells. <laughs> Which is sort of, you know, it's sort of the opposite of their philosophy, in my opinion. I, I've always thought that Druids were sort of the, the, um, the masters of none, you know. They were, they, they, they knew they could do everything, but kind of sucked at everything they did. But in Hearthstone, it almost seems like they can do everything and they're just great. <laughs> because this is not only, a, this is a basically tracking, you know. This isn't exactly tracking because you don't get cards from your deck. You get any card of the specified, you know, quality. But you get to choose whether you want a minion or a spell. You know what the game's made out of? Minions and spells. So yes, you could get a crappy minion or a crappy spell. But the chances are you're probably going to get a good spell. This is probably going to be used to get spells. Because you know what there's less of in the game? And minions? Spells. Less less spell, uh, less spell spells than minions means less chance to get a shitty one. Uh, not exactly. That's not like, you know, statistics there. I'm just saying. You're not going to be drawn, uh, you know, the little murloc we just looked at if you choose spells. So. I'm curious to see what happens with this card. I, I just don't know. Are there... Would I rather run this than Claw? You know? Probably? I, I, maybe? I, I don't know. So the next one is a Warrior, oh, well, excuse me, Warlock uh, minion, which is a 1-drop one 1-1 one, one, Reliquary Seeker. With Battle Cry, if you have 6 other minions, gain plus 4, plus 4. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to come out on a limb and say this card is not good. I am not going to play this card. <sighs> the reason is is it's a one drop. You know why one drops are good? Not because you can play them on turn six, when you have six minions on the field at some weird, you know, Christmas, Halloween, fantasy land of special occasions. There, so you can play them on turn one or two or three to fix your curve and get value. Not so you can play them turn six or seven or eight when you should have won the game already. So just because you get a five five for one, doesn't actually matter because you already had to put all this effort into getting guys on the field and at that point if you already have six minions on the field probably winning this card's a trap <laughs> next next one is a warrior minion it's a seven drop seven seven obsidian destroyer so he's going up against dr boom here at the end of your turn summon a one one scarab with taunt um okay hogger but worse this is weird. I'm guessing this is trying to go along with the taunt sort of uh, 
sort of thing that they're trying to do with warriors, and I don't see it happening. This is a very competitive mana cost for anyone because Dr. Boom exists. And uh, he just makes 1-1s. One that just doesn't sound great. You know who else makes 1-1s? One a 4-drop. Violet Teacher. <laughs> and yeah, she's not a 7-7 seven, seven, and they don't have taunt, but still, you know, you get to make a ton of them instead of one every turn, and yeah, this card just doesn't... I don't know, it's just like the other card that has to deal with warrior taunts. This is gonna really... You know, it's gonna change a lot depending on how good Taunt Warrior is, and I just, it's not good now, so I, won't, I can't really make a verdict. Oh, hello there. Naga Sea Witch is a 5 drop 5-5 five five that says your cards cost 5 mana. This is the kind of card I like in Hearthstone. It's not pure value, it's not pure goodness, it's not Dr. Boom, it's not, you know, uh, Mysterious Challenger. This card can be bad. This card can be awful. If you drop this guy, and you're, you know, drawing one drops, you know, if, if you're hellbent, it doesn't matter, but if, you know, all of a sudden you have a full hand and you you were going to play things less than five, you just screwed yourself. First thing about card games, though, is you're not going to play this guy when that's the case. You're going to play this guy when all your minions cost a trillion. And I like that. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, it's especially helpful, I think, for the kind of uh, the Druid decks that want to be pumping cards out. On turn five, you know, five five's not horrible. And uh, in the next card, you know, your Doctor Boom is going to be your five. Your you know, your next big thing is going to be five, and that's pretty cool. But this just isn't going to see play in anything that costs, you know, where. 50% of the cards are less than 5. If the curve ends or, or peaks at 5, this card will be great. If the, you know, curve peaks at 6, this card's going to be great. But otherwise, this card's kind of booty. And I like that. I think cards should have downsides. You know, they shouldn't be good in every deck. Yeah, some cards have to be. Some cards end up being that way. But in general, I'd rather cards be more like this. Oh, God. Okay, so we get another Death Rattle. Oh, not Death Rattle. <laughs> Death Touch minion. This is a one drop, two one, beast snake, called Pit Snake, for the rogue, with the Death Touch ability. Destroy any minion damaged by this minion. It's not bad. It's not great. It's a two one, you know. Uh, typhoid rats are good in magic because they, you know, not every player has a two drop, deal one damage to target thing spell. Not everybody has that. Uh, what would that be, like Lava Dart? No, Lava Dart's a one drop, sorry. I'm getting all confused. But, you know, this is gonna be really bad in half the matchups. Not half, but Druid, Mage. Um, is that it? Druid, Mage, Shaman, that's three. Paladin, so that's four. A lot of the matchups. This card's not gonna be that great in, all the, in a lot of the matchups. But in the matchups that it will be great in, you know, any any deck that doesn't have easy ways to deal one damage, which admittedly aren't that many of them, but it's still. I like this card. I think it's cool that they added this sort of archetypal magic card into Hearthstone, but since the environments are so different, I do not see this guy being as good as it would be in magic. Like, this card would be baller in magic. This card is actually better than most of the cards that are like this in magic. Let's go to the next one. Reno Jackson... Which looks like, uh, oh god, what's his name? The guy from TF2. He's a legendary creature, neutral creature, which is a 6-drop 4-6 four, with a battle cry. If your deck contains no more than one of any card, fully heal your hero. Wow. Talk about build around me. This guy... <laughs> this guy is made for legendary only decks, obviously. Or... Uh, golden monkey decks, whatever you want to call them now. If all you're using is legendary minions, this guy fully heals you for 6 mana and gives you a 4-6. That's pretty great. Once again, though, I don't see that deck doing <laughs> anything good. But, you know, in the kind of live the impossible dream world, you uh, will be getting some value out of this guy. It's just never going to happen. So the next one is a 4-drop 2-6 two 
shaman minion called Rumbling Elemental, and it has, after you play a Battlecry minion, deal two damage to a random enemy. Oh, okay. This guy seems cool. Pretty cool, actually. I like this guy. I'm seeing a lot of Shades of Tempo Shaman here. You know, play this guy, then play uh, Black Rock Corruptor, and then play Fire Elemental. Yeah, I could see this guy being pretty fun. And then a bunch of sergeants as well. Yeah, this guy is going to be cool. I like this guy a lot. I want to play a cool Battle Cry Tempo Shaman deck now. Uh, that'd be a lot of fun. I, I don't know if he's going to be any good, but he's definitely a fun casual build around me card at least. And I'm pretty sure he'll be good in, uh, in Arena too. You know, maybe not the best 4-drop in the world, but anything that has this sort of effect, you know, a juggler effect... Is going to be good in some way. Some deck. Somewhere. Somehow. So the next one is a legendary 1-drop one 1-3 one neutral creature called Sir Finley Murgleton. With a battle cry of discover a new basic hero power. What? You just... What? And it's a murloc? What? Okay. So this is going straight into my murloc shaman deck where you get to choose a different less shitty hero power if you get warlock hero power in a shaman murloc deck with this guy ooh, that is ah value hello that is super cool i like this card a lot uh this card's just this card's amazing this card is just super fun a murloc first of all a one drop second of all and a battle cry that is not even something I would have imagined them doing with this mechanic. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Admittedly, he's probably going to be known as the shittiest legendary in the game because you know he's a one-drop legendary, and whenever you get a legendary, you expect it to be some like god, you know, world-rending destroyer of universes. But eh, it's a murloc. He's cute. I like him. Next one. Summoning Stone is a 5-drop neutral 1, or excuse me, 0-6 minion with whenever you cast a spell, summon a random minion of the same cost. Oh my god. Wow. So this guy's basically a tavern brawl on a stick. That is amazing. That is super cool. I don't even know what to think about this guy. I mean, seriously, uh, it, it costs way too much. Like, I don't see this guy being very good. He's five mana. That's that's kind of awful. It's going to be super fun in Arena. Super fun in Arena. And you know what? He may be even a build around me in Rogue. I could see that being a lot of fun. Oh, God. This guy's... Oh. If you haven't been mage, you just start printing four drops with all your fireballs from Anthonitis. Okay, I like this card. I like this card a lot. It's not going to be good, I don't think, but it's a super fun. You know, we're casual TCG here. We're supposed to be talking about casual formats and casual gaming. This is definitely, like, this is the, the pinnacle of that philosophy. <laughs> way overcosted. Well, not way overcosted, but, you know, probably not something you want on turn 5. It's a combo piece, so maybe it'll it'll be fine, you know, playing on turn 7, play some spells, innervate. Wow, if you had a, you play this guy, innervate, innervate, play a four drop, you get two zero drops, sure, but then you get a four drop for free. That's pretty cool. I don't know. This is another card that you sort of have to like dig into your uh, in your sort of like deck brewing side of your brain to see where you could go with this, but I don't know. It, it seems fun. The next spell is a one drop. I think is that a paladin spell? Sacred Trial which is like an Indiana Jones swinging axes sort of thing, which is a secret. When your opponent has at least three minions and plays another, destroy it. Okay. I actually think this is not that bad. You know, this is pretty cool. It's not great. It's very conditional. But it's not bad. I like this against aggro decks. And uh, Dr. Boom, <laughs> you know, if they play Dr. Boom and then play anything else, it gets blopped. But, uh, we'll see. The next spell is a rogue minion, which is a 4-drop 5-4, with a death rattle that says, add a coin to your hand. This is a flavor win, by all means. Super flavor win. 
Is it a good card? No. Probably not. Is it a card I want to play with? Maybe. It gives you a free combo enabler. And it may trade up. You know, I don't know how many five drops, or excuse me, anything above a four drop has five toughness. But if it does, this guy trades up. But just a coin. If it gave you three coins. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm asking for too much. I don't know. This guy doesn't seem great to me. He seems like fun, but not that great. I haven't used coin purse uh, guy uh, ever. So I don't know how good this guy's going to be. But a coin's always good in rogue. So maybe I'm sort of uh, underestimating the power of that. The next card is a four drop creature. A neutral creature. It's a 3 3 beast tomb spider with battle cry discover a beast. Wow. Um, four drop, three, three, we discover a beast. This is a pretty great card in in Hunter to top deck. You know, I wouldn't mind this guy when I really needed another beast. But in Hunter, when you need a beast, you play the beast and then just kill command, and you want something less than four mana. You want to be able to actually kill command <laughs> a bunch. And then, you know, Ram Herder or whatever, Ram Wrangler. But uh, this guy, I don't know. I, I like Discovery a lot. I think Discovery is great. Discovering cool things is cool. But this this just doesn't seem that, that great. You could get the Godzilla thing, whatever that's called. You could get, you know, um, the Beast or whatever that is. Beauty. But I just I just don't see this card being that great. It's kind of a... Uh, Kind of a weird card. It's just a weird mana cost for the effect. You know, do I want a 3-3 on turn 4? Maybe. It's not horrible. But then, you know, unless I draw a high main, probably not that happy with the, the next beast I draw in curve. You know? I don't know. This doesn't seem that great. The next spell is a 3-drop three 3-4 three minion for Rogue called Unearthed Raptor which has a battle cry of choose a friendly minion and gain a copy of its death rattle effect. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Hello there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, how about that Sylvanas for three? That's pretty sweet. Admittedly, you already have to have a Sylvanas on the field. So this is probably going to be you, wrap, uh, your, you Shredder and then do this guy. Or, you know, worst case scenario, you Lepernome and then do this guy. But, doesn't seem that bad. Pretty interesting for Sludge Belcher, I guess, you know. Not horrible, but not amazing either. I was thinking if you could do it from your hand or from an enemy minion, that'd be great with Sabanus. But, if you already have to have Sabanus on the field, you're probably already winning and or already going to be stealing enough stuff that it doesn't actually matter. But, maybe. Maybe. The next spell is a 6-drop minion, neutral minion, called Wobbling Runts, which is a 2-6 with a death rattle of 7 3 two, two runts What the f- What is this? I don't even know what to say about this card. And at this point, I've been doing this video for a while. So I may be just delirious, but I- I get- Okay, so obviously flavor win. Obviously this card is a huge flavor win. Is it a good card? I don't know. I guess with Juggler, but it's a 6-drop. The cards that want to really take advantage of Juggler are not going to be playing a 6-drop like this. Or at all. So, I guess it's it's funny. That has that That's what it's got going for it. But beyond that, yeah, I don't see this card being all that great. Not all that great. Next one is a 1-drop one 1-3 one Shaman Minion called Tunnel Trog. With, whenever you overload, gain one attack per locked mana crystal. Wow, that's that's interesting. Talk about overload. I have not seen that type of mechanic before. We've seen things that deal with overload, but we've never seen things that interact with the mana crystals that you have locked. That's pretty sweet. I like this card. And, top it all off, it's a 1-3, not a 2-1. Thank you, Blizzard. I love you guys. The card is actually pretty sweet. I want to play this guy. And then play a bunch of, like, whatever, well, overload cards. I was going to name a bunch, but, you know, whatever. And so that is it. Those are all of the Hearthstone League of Explorers cards that were posted on the Hearthstone account on Facebook today on the first day of BlizzCon. 
So this was Tom from Casual TCG signing out. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you want to like this video, feel free. If you want to subscribe to our channel for more casual trading card game and collectible card game content, feel free to do so. We're going to be doing a full set review, myself and Mike, hopefully once all the cards are revealed. But for now, I'll keep you guys posted as soon as I can about all the new cards that are being released and revealed over the next couple of days. And if you guys have any other comments or suggestions for any content you'd like to see on this channel, other card games, other types of content, new formats, feel free to let us know in the comment section below, and we'll obviously check those out and see what we can do going forward. I want to thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.